Hey guys, um, I feel like since I got a little time right now on the road, I, I uh, can can make a video that I feel like uh, ha has needed to be made for a while. Um, uh, it seems to be a subject of a lot of debate, a lot of confusion for sure, um, understandably so. And uh, with the master of all bulldogs, but a lot of other people, I, I've I've heard a lot of people say things about um, the Camelot bloodline that were completely false, um, and it seems to me like there's a lot of mystery around uh, the bloodline, what it is, um, what its background is. Is it a pit bull? Um, is it an American pit bull terrier? Is it an is it a, a American bully? Uh, what is it? Uh, Etc. You know, and um, I definitely. I've heard a lot of people talk, watched a few videos about um, the Camelot bloodline, out, even outside of the idiot master of all bulldogs who knows nothing about the Camelot bloodline. He ain't never had his hands on no Camelot dog, I promise you. I promise you. Um, uh, I've, I've heard nobody speak on the subject with anything that I would call authority. And that's not to say necessarily that I am an authority on the Camelot bloodline, but my involvement with the Camelot bloodline um, goes back 20 years and I used the bloodline prominently in my program at the time. Um, the very first ever straight Chevy, straight Camelot cross happened on my yard in North Idaho in 2003. And um, it, it turned out extremely well. Some of the best weight pull dogs that ever lived came down from that cross. And um, that, that cross was a uh, actually a prominent cross that was involved in the development of the red lion bloodline which i'm not a fan of but that cross was involved in that development and um uh it just so happened that um it drew some interest now i'm gonna stop right there and go and fast forward okay so if you want to talk about um the camelot bloodline and if you want to you know talk about the history the real history of the camelot bloodline there are two names and two kennel names that you have to know. And if you don't know the two names that I'm about to say, um, then you can't really be speaking on the history, at least, uh, maybe the state of, but not the history of, the Camelot bloodline, if you don't know the two names and in, in in, in who they are in relation to the Camelot bloodline. Those two names are Art Sedaris and Kenny Sonia. Okay? I'm going to start with Art Sedaris. Art Sedaris is the true originator, founder, developer of the Camelot bloodline. He owned and operated Camelot kennels for I don't know how long, 20 years. Um, and all of the dogs that were um, the foundation studs of the Camelot bloodline, the ones I consider, and I'll name them, there's four, but one stands a head and shoulders above the rest. But there's four that I would put in the foundational category for the Camelot bloodline, okay? That work was done by Art Sedaris, okay? And those four studs, first and foremost, Camelot's the Duke, okay? That's the prominent stud. That's the one that the modern day Camelot bloodline is heavily based off, almost exclusively. Okay, but that's one. The other is Raging Cajun, Camelot's Raging Cajun, Camelot's Jack Boots, and Camelot's Magnus. Now, if you don't know those dogs, then I would say you're not familiar with the foundation of the Camelot bloodline and its history once again. But those are the four dogs. You can look them up on the APBT pedigree database. You just search their names, whatever. Most likely you'll find pedigrees for them and a picture that accompanies them. And those are the four dogs that are the foundational studs, in my opinion. And a lot of people who understand the bloodline would say the same thing. The foundational studs of the true Camelot, original Camelot bloodline. Okay. The other name that I mentioned was Kenny Sonia. Okay. Kenny Sonia operated a kennel called Sonia Kennels or Sonia Pits, excuse me. Um, that was based heavily on the Camelot bloodline. He uh, had a dog named Chief that was a direct son of Camelot's the Duke, and he was incredible looking. Um, he was a little bit bigger than, than uh, the Duke was, and he produced probably better. He was the best producing son of the Duke, hands down, in the history of the Camelot bloodline. I'll never say anything other than that. Um, and let's, let's be honest here real quick about the size of the American pit bull terrier. Let me make a little side note. Okay. How big they can be. Oh, there's no such thing as a pit bull terrier over 60 pounds. Yeah. I've never seen it. Yeah. True game bred dogs don't come that big, bro. Everybody, let me just tell you without breeding for a size criteria at all, 
American Pit Bull Terriers, game bred. I'm talking about uh, game bred dogs um, going back like Patrick dogs, um, not Patrick Bullison, but Pat Patrick, just the straight Patrick dogs, uh, Sorrel's dogs, so those dogs. Uh, Garner dogs would routinely and regularly be producing dogs that were over 70 pounds chain back in the 70s without ever breeding with any size intention or size criteria. Game bred dogs are bred on one criteria. That criteria is performance. Okay, so that the size of the dogs sh should never really get too big as it relates to performance. Size isn't necessarily a benefit at all. Okay, so um. Dogs that were coming out 70 pounds plus chain is old as hell. And those dogs were that big on accident. They weren't bred to be big in any way, shape, or form. So for somebody to take dogs that routinely get in the, and the old family red nose, don't, don't get it messed up, is one of the biggest um, size-wise uh, dogs that you could consider at least some strains to be game bred, okay? Hemp Hill Wilder stuff, same thing. Routinely, you would see them over 70 pounds, routinely. And to say that those dogs are not pure game bred American Pit Bull Terriers is the stupidest thing ever. They're one of the oldest bloodlines outside of Colby that exists in the fucking breed. And they are 100% American Pit Bull Terrier, the actual old family red nose, hemp Wild, wilder base stuff. No doubt about it. <clears throat> so to say that somebody couldn't pick up a heavier strain of the, of the uh, old family red nose and breed it with a size criteria for a couple generations and then produce dogs that were coming out 10 pounds heavier than they were four generations like that's impossible it is not impossible and that's what happened up to the up to the stage um that i just mentioned those four foundational camelot studs every single one of them 100 percent um genetically american pit bull terrier the duke magnus um uh jack boots and Raging Cajun. Those dogs, the foundation of the Camelot bloodline that, as it was built and developed by Art Sedaris, the originator, Camelot Kennel's owner and operator. Okay, as it was put together and assembled by him, its actual originator, it was an American Pit Bull Terrier bloodline through and through. And they ran between 75 and 85 pounds on the male size, although Magnus Cajun and Jack Boots were all 70 pounds or less. Um, uh, the Duke was the only one that was 80 pounds plus, and he was like 80 pounds. There's a lot of rumors about how big he was, but you can look at the pictures of the dog and see that he's not a tall dog. So the tales of him being 100 pounds are false. He never, he was not. Um, now, he produced dogs routinely when bred large that were a little bit bigger than himself. And the chief, the dog that Kenny Sonia based his bloodline off of, Sonia Kennels, was bigger than uh, the Duke, but not by a bunch. Not by a lot, let's be real, but he was definitely a small, uh, 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 incrementally larger um, than his father. But that was the beauty of the Duke. He produced himself and bigger, and the Chief did the same, okay? So the dogs were getting pretty large on their own. Kenny Sonia was having a problem. Let me stop before I go forward there. At some point, Art Sedaris, the owner, owner and uh, operator of um, Camelot Kennels, and there's a lot of reasons and rumors. I don't know the facts of it. I wasn't personally involved. It was a story to me. But whatever the story behind it is, he stopped operating the kennel at some point in the early 2000s. And Kenny Sonia changed his name from Senny Co uh, Sonia Kennels to Camelot Pits. And that's the name that he still operates in and uh, uh, runs the yard from today. And many people look to him as the originator of the Camelot bloodline, but that's simply not the case. Okay, His kennel name is slightly, slightly misrepresentative of, of the history. All right. But I'm involved in that history, okay? And we're talking about are they pure, are they not, okay? And as Art Sedaris developed them, they were pure pit bulls. We're gonna go to the Camelot Pits website right now and I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of something um, when it comes to these dogs. You can just go in here, just go to that drop down menu, click on our boys, the stud page, okay? Slide down, all right? We're going to click on the first stud at the top of the stud page. Camelot Pits Outlaw. Beautiful dog. Beautiful dog. Beautiful dog. 118 pounds, and I believe that size. 26-inch head. That is 100% accurate to based on these pictures. And look at him. He's a gorgeous animal. A gorgeous animal. 
And I'm happy to say that I was involved in the production of this dog because I was heavily. And I'm going to go down here and show you how. You scroll down, scroll down, lots of pictures. I love a website with a lot of pictures. He's a beautiful dog. Every bit that 118 that he claims. We're going to come down here. And you see his sire's name, Camelot Pitts Spider-Man. What's the name that you see if you know how to read a pedigree? Who is Camelot Pitts Spider-Man's dam? A dog is named Holtz, Georgia. I sold that dog to Kenny Sonia in 2004. She is a pure Chevy dog with a, with a maybe an eight to a quarter Castillo outcross. If you guys are familiar with the Castillo bloodline, you are. If you aren't, you aren't, but it's a chocolate based, basically a staff bloodline by my evaluation. Um, <clears throat> either way, okay? That's a pure Chevy dog. I owned her parents and I produced her father and he bought her from me in 2005 and used her in his program prominent. Read her several times, kept stuff from every breeding and used it in his program going forward. Okay, that dog is a pure Chevy dog. <laughs> that dog is pure Whopper Chevy right there. Okay, right? So you see the name Holtz? Yeah, you see the name Dela Cruz? Those are two names that are developed that were um, associated with heavy Chevy bloodline and crosses thereof in the early 2000s. Me under the tutelage of Jack Ellis. If you don't know who Jack Ellis is, you don't have any business talking about DDK's to Hulk with any authority either. That's another video and another story for another time. We're talking about Camelot bloodline, okay? So is the Camelot bloodline, as it stands today, an American pit bull terrier bloodline? No, I doubt there's anybody that has anything pure that hasn't been touched by Kenny Sonia's stuff. Nobody else did it on the level and maintained the bloodline and worked with it as long and as, and as well as he did. The work he did is wonderful. Those dogs that he produces over there are worth every penny of what he charges. And I, and, I, and I don't have any problem saying it based on whatever the personal relationship anybody has with that man. Um, like I said, I'm proud to say I was involved in the development of his dogs. And if you go through and look at kennels on his website, or uh, pedigrees on his website, you'll see my name, Holtz. You'll see the Dela Cruz name. And you'll see another name, Valdez. And anytime you see a dog associated with those two na three names in the Camelot pedigree, those dogs at that point in the development of those dogs, they were mixed with Whopper dogs, specifically Chevy dogs, with some Dagger as well mixed in. So there it is. No, they are not. They are XL bullies. They are not American Pit Bull Terriers. They were. They were American Pit Bull Terriers until the steward of the bloodline did business with me, apparently. But um, like I said, I was a young guy. And at the time, all of the dogs were registered that were used were all registered with the ADBA. OK, let's be honest. Kenny Sonia, let me be clear, never hung any papers on any dog that I have knowledge of. He never did. OK, but he used dogs in his program that had hung papers behind them. OK, be it, that being the, 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 um, the Eddington blood, the Chevy Whopper blood specifically. OK, I can say 100 um, you know, percent. Now, I, it was a situation where maybe the, my mentor uh, held the wool over my eyes and I just kind of wanted to believe what I was being taught by my mentor at the time. But I can look back and say, OK, those dogs were not pure American pit bull terriers. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's the story. Yes, they were. And no, they're not. Um, let me know if you liked the video. Um, feel free to try to fact check anything that I said, look it up, um, do some support research to verify that what I'm telling you is the real deal. Uh, maybe talk to some old heads if you know anybody and they'll tell you the same stuff that I just told you. At that point, and if you go and look up those names and go behind that dog, Ellis is Maggie May, Holtz Laszlo, you see a lot of Chevy. You see a lot of Chevy. That's a lot. That's all Chevy stuff. And even right there, er, close up on the pedigree with Dela Cruz and Chevelle, you can see Chevy Red Dog there without even going back behind my stuff. But uh, there it is. That's the that's the way it wraps up, and that's the way it shakes out. If that was something interesting for you guys, I got other stories that I can tell you um, about what was done with who, when, where, what, how when it comes to the development of the Double XL Bully with intimate knowledge. Okay, so if you guys want to hear any more videos about that type of content, Dagger Dog, Chevy Dogs. Gotti dogs, you know, mixes thereof, uh, the Camelot bloodline, etc. I'm the guy to talk to. Um, I mean, I'm not the guy, but it seems like when it comes to YouTube, I'm the guy that actually has has the most firsthand experience with those bloodlines. Now, it's been a long time ago. 
I was out of dogs for a long time, but at the time when a lot of this impactful stuff was happening with these big dogs and the American bully and the XL bully and the, you know, all of these things were going on and being finally divulged and sorted out and, 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 and the registries did do the best they could with the situation. They didn't create it necessarily. They definitely didn't stop it either, but they didn't create it. And they did what they could with it going forward. So what that means is that there's a lot of dogs that are mixed in every different branch. Going to the AKC staffs, UKC pit bulls, ADBA pit bulls. There was, you know, there was always that going on. But you can just count on bullies and pit bulls um, being hard to sort out unless you really know how to read a pedigree and and know what what the bloodlines mean and what the pedigrees tell you. You know, if you can't sort through it, you know, you might end up buying a dog that's mixed unintentionally. But there are pit bulls with that are dogs that are still registered as pit bulls that have bully stuff mixed in them and vice versa. But the Camelot bloodline, that's the facts right there. It wasn't a it was an American pit bull terrier bloodline, a fantastic one. It is not any longer. Thanks for checking me out, guys. I appreciate you. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Thanks for coming by.